It's Anything Goes Friday. And Devin, in, excuse me, Devin, in Houston, Texas, you are on the air. Thanks for listening to Sirius XM. Thank you, Tom. Great show as always. Thank um, you. My question for you is, um, do you think that conservative, conservative mindset in general is incompatible with governance? The reason I say that is I, I kind of split it into two camps. The one camp is purely authoritarian-minded, so when they actually get government, government, they try to rule instead of govern. And the second mindset is the – well, they like to call themselves like a libertarian. is like a weird form of libertarianism, but they're – Social social of caring is so small that they can't empathize with other people outside of it. And to me, this just finds them the best. It's like what same person expects something from someone they're not willing to do for someone else. Mm -hmm. Just like with that last lady, she's like, well, this is happening to me. But you're telling her this has happened to me is also. But she just like, well, she, she doesn't outright say I don't care, but by her, to her talking, she doesn't. Yeah, well, let's, let's not let's not pick on a caller who's not here to defend herself. I, I here's my take on this, Devin, and it's a really, actually, I think a very, very, very important issue. And in fact, I, you're, we're getting a lot of road noise from you, so you've asked the question. I'm going to drop the call, but thank you very much for the call, and uh, and I'll answer it. My dad was a Republican. I grew up in a Republican household. My dad worked in a tool and die shop. He was a member of the machinist union. He had a good union job. He was able to, to uh, raise four boys and, and put some of us through school. And uh, he had a, a, a good wage. He, every three years, he bought a new car. He took a two-week vacation every year. He had a pension that he retired on that, that extended to my mom, who died a decade after my dad did. Um, it, it was a good time. And the conservatives at that time, and my dad and I used to sit and watch William F. Buckley fire in line you know, on PBS. This was back in the, in the 60s. Um, and, and, you know, and we debated politics our whole lives. But my dad would not, in my opinion, would not be uh, a Republican today. When Steve Scalise gets elected in Louisiana by proclaiming that he is David Duke without the hood, you know that something wrong has happened. Now, this was part of the Democratic Party at one time. The Democratic Party up until the 60s, up until the Civil Rights Act, when Lyndon Johnson said to Bill Moyers, you know, if I sign this legislation, the Democratic Party is going to lose the South for a generation, he was right. Because the Democratic Party had been an anti a pro-segregation, anti-integration party up until the mid-60s or in the early 60s. John Kennedy was opposed to this, too. But the Democratic Party got their act together. Robert Byrd condemned the Klan and, and left the Klan and was, I think, the last Democrat who had ever been a Klan member who was in Congress, and Robert Byrd is long dead. He died in his 90s, uh, you know, a decade ago or thereabouts. The Republican Party, though, I mean, literally, Steve Scalise said, I am David Duke without the hood. This is, the, you've got Republican, there's actual, a guy named Andrew, is it Arthur Johnson, is his name? Or Arthur Jones, what, what, Arthur Jones, I think? Yeah, you've got a Republican right now who is an open Nazi running. I mean, he was on TV just, you know, yesterday or the day before on CNN, um, you know, proclaiming his Nazism, racial supremacy, you know, white supremacy, all this kind of stuff. Uh, that would not happen in the Democratic Party today. But it's not, but, but it's not Republican Democrat. It's really conservative Republican. What has happened is as the, as since 1976 with the Buckley decision in the Supreme Court, which said that if billionaires want to own politicians, they can. That is considered uh, you know, pouring money into politics is considered, under the Buckley decision in 76, free speech under the First Amendment. Now, prior to 76, it was regulated, particularly after 73, after the Nixon scandals, all kinds of reforms were passed. You couldn't, you couldn't give more than $1,200 to a politician, couldn't give more than, uh, I think it was $2,400 to a party. It, you know, it locked out the billionaires from controlling our politics. But after the Buckley decision, and particularly after Citizens United in 2010, but Buckley really started it because this was something that the Reagan, uh, the whole Reagan machine took huge advantage of. The billionaire class and the big corporations basically walked in and took over the Republican Party. So you now have a Republican Party that is no longer conservative the way my dad was conservative. It's, uh, Barry Goldwater would repudiate this, this party. Even on the social stuff, I mean, Barry Goldwater famously said, you don't have to be straight to shoot straight. He was fine with gays in the military. The, the, this, this 
Republican Party that calls itself conservative, and I wince every time I hear the word conservative, is not really conservative. There, the, you know, Richard Nixon was a conservative, and Richard Nixon was fine with the Environmental Protection Agency. I mean, he tried to stop it, but he, you know, he he enforced it. He promoted it. He put somebody in, you know, somebody in charge of it that actually enforced the law. Now you've got somebody running the EPA who is nakedly trying to take it apart. They they don't care if you're poisoned by your air or water as long as Coke Industries makes more profit. Because, you know, the, the guys who own Coke Industries, the Koch brothers and their network are pouring $400 million into the election cycle just this year. $400 million. You can buy a hell of a lot of Republican politicians with $400 million. So the Republican Party has, by and large, with a few exceptions, and, and you know, John McCain and and the, it, it, basically the ones who are being pushed out, Jeff Flake, uh, Bob Corker, they were, you know, they, they stood up and said, no, this is not how, how our party should be. You know, we're conservatives in the mold of Barry Goldwater. And, and, and what that was defined as back in that day, and the way my father defined conservatism, is yes, of course we want progress. We want the nation to move forward. We want people to have, I mean, keep in mind, uh, Dwight Eisenhower's 1956 re-election pl platform, and if there are any conservatives listening, I encourage you to Google this. You will find it. It's all over the internet. It's easy to find. The Republican Party's platform in 1956. And Dwight Eisenhower, what he explicitly not only campaigned on, but advertised in his campaigns, and you can find those online as well. Dwight Eisenhower, conservative Republican, when conservative actually meant conservative, not corporate bought and owned. Dwight Eisenhower campaigned on the fact that he had increased union membership by over two million people. He campaigned on the fact that he had increased social security benefits and added over a million people to the social security rolls. Dwight Eisenhower campaigned on the fact that they had built over 100,000 units of low-income housing for people to, to deal with homelessness in the United States, particularly homeless vets who had come back from World War II. Dwight Eisenhower wanted to expand the public good. He just wanted to do it in a conservative fashion, which meant slowly, carefully, thoughtfully, and as inexpensively as possible. All of that is out the window now. Now you have a Republican Party that calls itself conservative, and I don't know why news reporters say this is conservative to pass a $5 trillion tax cut, 80% of which goes to the top 1% of the United States, 80%. And, you know, to pass that and borrow a trillion and a half dollars, which is going to add around $3 trillion, or around $2 trillion, excuse me, to our national debt when you include the interest on the payments, adding $2 trillion to our national debt, literally borrowing $2 trillion to hand to the Koch brothers, to hand to the Waltons, who are, who are, you know, uh, getting tens of billions of dollars in tax cuts this year and going forward. That's not conservative. That's being a shill for billionaires. They're, they're giving Apple, you know, a, a huge, multi, multi tens of billion dollar tax cut. That's not conservative. That's being a shill for, for a, a big business that is so unpatriotic that they don't manufacture in the United States. And with all the pressure that's been put on them, they're still telling us that we can go screw ourselves. They're going to continue manufacturing in China. And it's not just Apple. Trump products are made in China. Ivanka Trump products are made in China. We have lost 97,000 manufacturing jobs since Trump became president. But this is not Donald Trump's fault. In fact, he has pointed this out on the campaign trail. It's just that as president, he's doing squat. This all started back with Reagan. Reagan started this process of, of so-called free trade, started promoting it. And then it went on steroids in the early on in the Clinton administration with NAFTA. And then we got CAFTA and then we got all these other, you know, SHAFTA, all these free, so-called free trade agreements. And on average, over the last 30 years since this process started during the Reagan administration, we've lost about 100,000 U.S. manufacturing jobs every single year. That's the average. Millions of jobs in total have gone overseas. And nothing is reversing that. That's not conservative. That's got nothing to do with conservative. 
I asked the caller earlier to, to name one thing. We, we ran this contest for years on this program. If you can name one thing that Republicans have done that principally benefits working people rather than just the super rich or corporations. And typically they'll call up and they'll say, well, we got a big tax cut out of George Bush. 90% of that tax cut went to the top 10%, 78% of it went to the top 1%. Again, that wasn't for the average working person. In fact, it was Bernie Sanders who shamed George W. Bush by saying, hey, let's give 300 bucks to everybody. And so $300, you know, a check, one-time check went out to everybody along with a piece of paper. I got one in the mail, along with a piece of paper saying, this is from George W. Bush. It's a gift to you, basically, you know, to help his reelection. But that's not conservative either. Conservative is figuring out a way to move forward, move into the next, the next uh, century, to, to, to move our country forward only in a careful, cautious way. Liberals tend to say, oh, well, let's move forward in a more rapid way and we'll fix our mistakes as we go along because we want to see you know, these, these changes happen quickly. Conservatives say, oh, you know, we're fine with the changes, we just want to do them carefully. At least that's how it was until the 1980s. But conservative no longer means conservative. Conservative now means bought and paid for shill for corporations and billionaires.